Dolly, thank you for sharing that song with us today. That is an amazing song. Uh, and I, I hope you're able to catch all of those lyrics. And sometimes the blessings that God delivers are not in the way that we would like. Um, thank you so very much. Yet he still blesses. Amen. If you have your Bible, I want you to look with me in Matthew, the seventh chapter today. We're going to be looking together there in just a little bit. But before we get into the message, I want to make you aware of something. We're in the process of putting together a new church directory. And um, quite honestly, what I need from you, if you will, will help me out with this, if we are your church home, uh, we want to get updated information on you. We, we found out that we've been able to celebrate with several of our people when they have a birthday or an anniversary coming up. But there's some of you that we're missing and we just we don't have that information. So we're inviting you to give that to us. But if we're your church home, uh, whether you're attending online or in person or a mix of the two, we just want to know that, hey, you're with us. We're with you. And uh, we've got. For in person, we've got these yellow slips. Now, it's not a pink slip. If you get a pink slip, you're out of here, right? Yellow slip is, hey, this is my church home, and I want you to have whatever information you feel like putting on here, your name. If you'd like for us to have your mailing address, we would love to send you our newsletter. If we can get um, contact information as far as phone numbers and email, anything you'd like for us to have, we would love to have your birthday. Now, please understand, you do not have to put your year, all right? We don't want to count your birthday. We want to celebrate your birthday. We don't have to count it to celebrate it. Amen? But if you'll give us birthday and anniversary information, anything you'd like for us to have, you can put it on this yellow slip and leave it in the box on your way out. Um, some of you have received an email to get this information and get it updated. Uh, if you are watching online, you can just message us in and give us this information as well. But we appreciate your help with that. All right? Uh, today, as I share with you, before I guess we really get into the message, I know one of the things that's been important for us to do while we had the stay-at-home orders back then and, you know, more time on our hands and some of us maybe have had to spend a little more time at home because of quarantining or whatever, and hopefully uh, some among us have actually gotten sick and, and gotten through it and we're grateful for that, but We've all had some downtime, and they've suggested that maybe we ought to do a little more reading. So I kind of took them up on that, and I decided that I would do a little reading of one of the classics. <laughs> what are you laughing at? This is a classic. And I, I found this really intriguing. And I, if you don't mind... I, I'd just like to read it to us today. Let me get cozy here. Uh, do do y'all know that my first grandbaby's due before too long? <laughs> and when that grandbaby gets here, I get to read that grandbaby stories. So I want to get practiced up. Let's get comfortable. I would have you come sit in my lap, but there's a <laughs> pandemic going on, you know? And it would be really awkward, too, that many people. So anyway, but just... Let me read this story. This is, this is a classic. Once upon a time. That's how you know it's a classic. It all the classics start there. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who went out into the big world to build their homes and seek their fortunes. The first little pig did not like to work at all. He quickly built himself a house of straw. And then off he danced down the road to see how his brothers were getting along. And as he danced, he sang, I built my house of straw, I built my house of hay, I toot my flute, I don't give a hoot, and play around all day. Oh my. Sound like anybody you know? Don't point fingers. Well, the second little pig was building himself a house too. He did not like to work either any better than his brother, so he decided to build a quick and easy house of sticks. And soon it was finished too, and 
It was not very, a very strong little house, but at least the work was done. And now the second little pig was free to do what he liked. What he liked to do was to play his fiddle and dance. So while the first little pig tooted his flute, the second little pig swayed away on his, sawed away rather on his fiddle and danced as he, as he played. And as he danced, he sang these words, I built my house of sticks, I built my house of twigs. With a hey diddle diddle, I play on my fiddle and dance all kinds of jigs. If you were my grandbaby, I would sing and dance for you, but none of you are my grandbaby. Then off he danced, off danced the two little pigs down the road together to see how their brother was getting along. Well, the third little pig was a sober little pig. He was building a house too, but he was building his of bricks. He did not mind hard work. He, he wanted a stout little strong house for he knew that in the woods nearby there lived a big bad wolf who would like nothing better than to catch little pigs. So slap, slosh, slap, away he worked, laying bricks and smoothing mortar between them. Ha, 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 laughed the first little pig when he saw his brother hard at work. Ho, 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 laughed the second little pig. Come down and play with us, he called. But the busy little pig did not pause. Slap, Slosh, slap, went the bricks on the mortar as he called down to them. I will build my house of stones. I will build my house of bricks. I have no chance to sing and dance for work and play. They don't mix. Ho, 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 ha, 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 laughed the two lazy little pigs, dancing along to the tune of the fiddle and the flute. The third little pig said, you can laugh and dance and sing. He called out after them, but I will be safe and you'll be sorry when the wolf comes to the door. Ha, 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 ho, 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 laughed the two little pigs again. And they disappeared into the woods singing this merry tune. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf? Who's afraid of that big bad wolf? Just as the first pig reached the door, out of the woods popped that big bad wolf. And the little pig squealed with fright and slammed the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, cried the wolf. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, said the little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, roared the wolf. And he did. And he blew the straw house all to pieces. Away raced the little pig to his brother's house of sticks. And no sooner was he in the door when knock, 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 there was the big bad wolf. But of course, the little pigs would not let him come in. I'll fool those little pigs, chuckled the big bad wolf to himself. Then he said out loud, oh, those little pigs are too smart for me. I'm going home. He started off toward the deep woods, but... He did not go very far. He hid behind a big tree. Soon the door opened and the two little pigs peeked out and there was no wolf in sight. Ha, 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 ho, 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 laughed the two little pigs. We fooled him. Then they danced around the room singing, Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? The big bad wolf, the big bad wolf. Who's afraid of that big bad wolf? Soon there came another knock at the door. It was the big bad wolf again, but he had covered himself with sheepskin and was curled up in a big basket, looking like a little lamb. Who's there, called the second pig. I'm a poor little sheep with no place to sleep. Please open the door and let me in, said the big bad wolf in a sweet little voice. The little pig peeked through the crack of the door and he could see the wolf's big black paws and large, sharp fangs. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. You can't fool us with that sheepskin, said the second little pig. Then I'll say it with me. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, cried the angry wolf. So what did he do next? He huffed and he puffed and he huffed 
and he blew the little twig house all to pieces. Away raced the two little pigs straight to the third little pig's house of bricks. Don't worry, said the third little pig to his two frightened brothers. You are safe here. And soon they all began singing. This made the big bad wolf furious. Now by the hair of my chinny chin chin, he roared, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So the big bad wolf did just that. He huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but he could not blow down that little house of bricks because they contracted Herb's construction. <laughs> How could he get in? At last he thought, oh, the chimney. So up he climbed quietly, and then with a snarl down, he jumped right into a kettle of brown beans. With a yelp of pain, he sprang straight up the chimney again and raced away from that little house as fast as he could go. And the three little pigs spent their time in the strong little brick house singing and dancing merrily. And the big bad wolf went on his way. Now isn't that a classic story? You ought to read the classics more. You know, Jesus told one similar to this. It's found in Matthew chapter 7. Jesus' version of the story went this way. Look with me in Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Jesus says these words. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, please note that, I will liken him to a wise man who built his home on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall because it was founded on a rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, I will liken him to the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat on that house also. But it fell. And great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority. And not as the scribes. The classic version of the three little pigs in Jesus' story at the end of the Sermon on the Mount teach us some valuable lessons today. Just like the three little pigs in the story and the ones that Jesus was talking about, we're all trying to build a life. Amen? Amen? We all, in this room right now, pretty much, have come of age. And we've started out, and some of us are further along the way on that journey, where we went out to make a life and to make a living. We went out, perhaps, to seek fortune, maybe even a little fame. But hopefully, somewhere along the way, we wanted to build a good life. There's nothing wrong with wanting to build a life. We all, if you will, are building on our, a foundation in this world. 
We all want to live and prosper and go on. And there's a foundation that we're building on. We're building a house. It could be of straw. It could be of sticks. It could be of bricks. We're building on a foundation. It's either on the rock or it's on shifting sand. But we're all building. We're all going to face some storms in life. Have you caught that? Man, if 2020 hadn't taught us anything, it should have taught us or should be teaching us. Some storms are going to come. Difficulties are going to happen. Strange things can come out of nowhere. Elections may or may not go our way. Storms are going to come. Whether you're building on sand or if you're building on rock, the storms are going to happen. Now, I want you to understand today, my friends, Jesus was explicitly clear in this story that we should be building on the right foundation. But I want you to note in this story that regardless of the foundation you're building on, the storms will happen. There's a notion out there among some people that if you put your life on the foundation of Christ, it'll always be peaceful. My friends, there's a Greek word for that. It, it, there's a Greek word for that philosophy. It's called hogwash. All right? The Hebrew word is baloney. But listen to me. Regardless of the foundation you're building on, the storms are going to show up in your life. And brothers and sisters, hear me out today. If you've ever believed, if you've been taught somewhere along the way that, oh, if I just give my life to Christ, everything's going to be unicorns and roses and, and rainbows or whatever. No, that's just not true. Do you realize that even, you know, even Christians get bit by mosquitoes? Did you know that? I often wish God would have made it to where mosquitoes only bit those who are lost in sin. That would make it real interesting. You go out on a picnic, you would know who's lost and who's saved. <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting? See somebody over there eating it, they're doing this number, and say, like, oh, I wonder what they've been doing. <laughs> right? But that's not, that's not how it works. Uh, lost people and found people have mosquitoes come after them. I honestly kind of wish that God would make it to where once you give your life to Him, that the leaves won't fall on your yard. Wouldn't that be nice? Gene? Gene's been working his tail off getting the leaves up around this church. And if God just made it to where, you know, the leaves didn't fall on the saints' property, well, some of us would either not be living right here at the church or, or something, right? But that's not how it works. Those pretty leaves turn color and they fall on the yard of the saints just as much as they do of the sinners. I, I wish I could tell you today that if you get your life on the right foundation, that you wouldn't have to worry about COVID affecting you. But do you realize that disease is no respecter of persons? I wish I could tell you today that if you give your life to Christ, you never have to worry about getting cancer. But it's simply not true. Storms of all shapes and sizes come to all of us. The difference is not in whether storms come or winds blow in our lives. The difference is in how we respond. Jesus said, if you're built on the right foundation, the storms come, hard times come, but those who are on the right foundation will stand. And those who aren't, the storm will reveal that, and their house will crumble. 
Jesus said, to weather the storms, you've got to have the right foundation. Now, you need to understand what I've read for us today from the Scripture in context. These verses, this story that Jesus is telling, is at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount in its largest form is found in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. And I want to strongly encourage you to take some time in this next week to to read that in its entirety and take your time as you do so because there's important teaching in that. Now, you could either do that or I could take the time and read it for us now. Which you think is better? Okay, yeah, I thought that's right. Well, you're going to read it later, right? No, seriously, I encourage you to take some time and read it. But understand, as Jesus taught and preached the Sermon on the Mount, here are just a few things that he covered. He started out in the... In Matthew chapter 5, giving what we refer to as the Beatitudes. And he said things like this. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit because they're going to receive the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are the ones who mourn because they're going to be comforted. And the meek are going to inherit the earth. And the hungry, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they're going to be really filled. Those who are merciful are going to be the ones who receive mercy. Take note of that in these trying times. Amen. He went on to say the pure in heart are the ones who will see God. He even had something really important to say about blessed are the peacemakers. Dear God, if we need any of those, we need them now. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. And then he unfortunately ended it up by saying blessed are those who are persecuted for the right reasons. He reminded us there. That even when you're doing the right thing, you might get in trouble for it. You keep on reading down through this Sermon on the Mount, you'll find out Jesus said some things like this. He said, you know you're not supposed to murder. Amen? That's a sin. But I'm telling you, don't be angry with your brother without a cause. He equated the two. He even went on to say, if you come to worship and you realize you got a problem with somebody, you need to leave the worship service and go do your part to try to make it right with them. Now, you can't do their part, but you can do your part to try to make it right. He, he taught in this sermon how we're to not commit adultery physically. That's one of the big ten. But he said even if you look at someone and lust after them, you've committed that adultery in your heart. He teaches in this Sermon on the Mount that you're not supposed to divorce for just any reason. He said, turn the other cheek and go the extra mile. He said, you're to love your friends. Hallelujah. Love your friends. You read in there make sure that I get this right. You can love your friends, but you can hate those who voted other than the way you voted. Right? No, you better double check me on that one. That don't sound like Jesus. That sounds like what most of us want to act like. In the nation, none of you here or none of you watching, it's those other people. I get it. Now, Jesus said we're to love our friends and our enemies. And by the way, those people who might have voted differently than you did aren't necessarily your enemy. Please remember that. Jesus taught. We're to help others as privately as possible. We're to forgive others just as we've been forgiven. He, he teaches in this sermon we're not to condemn other people. He teaches us in this message that we're to treat other people the way we want to be treated. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That and a whole lot more is taught in the Sermon on the Mount. And when he comes to the end of it, he says, listen, if you hear what I've just taught you, if you just hear it and walk away from here, then everything's going to be all right with you. You just need to hear it, and you can let it go in one ear and out the other, and everything's going to be fine with your life. You can log your time. You tuned in to the online service. You showed up for the in-person service. The Sermon on the Mount has been delivered to you. Go and do whatever you want to now, and everything's going to be okay, Right? Nope. Jesus said, if you hear these sayings of mine and do them, put them into practice, 
You've got to hear it. Amen? You need to read it for yourself so you can hear it in your own voice. You need to come to church. Thank you for tuning in or being here today to hear what I had to say about it. You can listen to other people who are preaching the Word and teaching the Word of God. You can hear it. It's important to hear it. But it's not enough to just hear it. You've got to do it also. Jesus said, if you hear these sayings of mine and do them, then your life will be on a solid foundation. And when those storms come your way, when you're getting more bills in the mail than checks, when the weather comes in and it rains on your parade, when the election doesn't go your way, when all of these things occur, when the report from the doctor is not favorable, when you hear of someone's accident and things aren't looking good, when these things come, yes, they're going to be sad, yes, they're going to be difficult, but you're going to stand because you're on the right foundation. But you don't get on that foundation by hearing alone. You got to do it. You got to put it into practice. And we understand this in other areas of our lives, do we not? I got acquainted some time ago with a young lady uh, named Allie Hall at the time that I met her. Uh, put that first picture up there, please. This was the Allie Hall that I met many years ago in Louisiana. She was a student at Mid America Christian University. Uh, I actually found out she had roomed, my daughter and her had roomed together for a time while they were there. And Allie was a part of a camp team from the university that came and worked at fourth and fifth grade camp that I was one of the directors of. So I met Allie at the uh, Sunday night before camp started at our camp staff, uh, get to know each other meeting and orientation and that kind of deal. She introduced herself and, and I met Allie and she walked up and I want to be perfectly honest with you. As a camp director, I looked at Allie and I know what it takes to do all of camp with a bunch of fourth and fifth graders, all right? You get 100 fourth and fifth graders together, you got to wear those little turkeys out so they go to sleep at night, all right? Because if you don't wear them out, if you don't like have enough activity for them to go, 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 and they're not tired and their heads, when their heads hit the pillow, they don't go to sleep like really quick. You know what those little angels do? <laughs> yeah. They raid cabins and they sneak out and they do all this kind of stuff and they keep the camp director, i.e. me, from getting his beauty sleep. All right? Now take a real good look at me. I need all the beauty sleep I can get, all right? So I learned down through the years when, when in directing camp, you got to have plenty of activity and you got to have counselors who can be really, really active with them and just, you know, help them learn about Jesus. What we wanted to happen at camp more than anything else, we wanted them to meet Jesus, you know, get in a relationship with Jesus if they didn't already know him. If they already had a relationship with Jesus, we wanted them to grow in that relationship. And then we wanted them to go to sleep at night. Because the head camp director, <laughs> he needs his beauty sleep. Thank you. One honest parishioner in the bunch. Thank you, brother. Well, I just got to be honest. Having done camp for quite some years, when I saw Allie, I realized she was going to be able to do certain things in camp. But I looked at her and I, I kind of thought, you know what? There's some part of camp that she's not going to be as strong in. And, and it wasn't any big deal. We had other counselors who could uh, take care of those things. But honestly, her size was going to kind of prohibit that. Now, please understand, Allie, even from the time I met her on, she was an amazing young lady, very talented, loved the Lord with all of her heart, uh, was, uh, very gifted musically. She interacted with those kids and taught them some really fun games and did an amazing job as a camp counselor. But... 
She wasn't the one that we put first in line at this time in her life to run up and down the field with the kids. Allie was overweight. But Allie reached a point in her life where she heard about how to make some changes. She heard that, you know, if you want to lose weight, one of the ways, one of the key ingredients to that is you got to burn more calories. Y'all might want to write this down because this is secret information. It's very secret. And I'm giving it to you for free, okay? If you want to lose weight, you've got to burn more calories than you take in. Isn't that profound? That is secret information. I mean, so secret. Now, it's common knowledge, right? It's very common that, you know, if you want to lose weight, you've got to burn up more calories than, than you're taking in. And, and that includes, you know, pushing back from the table sometimes. Not eating the eighth serving of something, right? Okay? It, it means... That super burger that I love at Dolly's, I might have to like downsize that a little bit. You know, it, 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 it's, it's just, you got to push back from the table and you might have to start doing not only some push backs, but some push, push ups. Okay. Some of you have been in the military, you know about push ups, right? Okay. Push ups for me as a kid growing up was those little orange sherbet things. That's a push up. Yeah, but you don't lose weight with those push ups. All right. Well, Allie had heard, like most of us have, much of our lives. Diet, exercise. You know, to lose weight, something else you can do. You can join a gym. You, you can get you a membership at the Princeton Fitness Center. I think Brenda Woodward can set you up with this, but I would imagine they will automatically draft out of your account your monthly dues and you just get your membership at the Princeton Fitness Center and all will be well, right? Just pay that money each month. You know what? You, back in the day, you used to be able to get exercise videos on VHS. Can I see a show of those who got them VHS players? There we go. Maybe at one point you got DVDs. Okay. A few more of us have those. Well, now you can stream these exercise workout videos. Some of them you pay for a fee. Some of them are even free access. You can get those all you just just log on, tune in. There you go. Watch those videos all day long, right? Easy. I mean, can you imagine that? Just watch those videos. <laughs> just keep watching. No. Allie reached a point in her life where she realized just knowing about burning more calories than you take in and just joining a gym or just getting an exercise video and watching it, she, she realized that wasn't enough. She not only had to hear, but she had to do. She had to go to the gym. She had to restrict the amount she was eating. She had to exercise, develop different habits. And she did for 365 days. This young lady that I met, uh, and that was her when I first met her, 365 days later, this was her picture. You know why? You know what the difference was? She put it into practice. She didn't just hear, she did. She acted upon what she heard. And let me tell you something. Put that next, next, look at this. Look at that comparison. Do you realize she lost me? I'm not kidding. From that one picture to the other, she lost me. Well, how much is that, Brother Ray? None of your stinking business. That's how much. 
you nosy people. She lost 160 pounds. You know why? She not only heard, but she did. Now listen to me. You don't need me to tell you there are a lot of storms in America right now. You already know that. You don't need to tell me to tell you and remind you of all the different things that 2020 has brought our way. We already know that. What I'm here to remind us of today is that regardless of the storms, regardless of the heartaches, regardless of the outcome of the election, we can stand on solid ground. But you're only going to be standing on solid ground if you hear and do what Jesus says. Now, hearing and doing doesn't mean the storms are going to go away automatically. Hearing and doing doesn't mean the, the final outcome of this election is necessarily going to be what you want. Hearing and doing doesn't mean that the mosquitoes are going to stay away from you. Hearing and doing means that no matter what happens, you're going to stand because you're standing on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Oh, some time ago, some time ago, God inspired a hymn writer who penned these words. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veils His lovely face, I rest in His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds in within the veil. His oath, His covenant, His blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. And when He shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Are you standing on the rock of Jesus Christ? The way you determine that is have you not only heard, but are you doing what he says? Bow your heads and pray with me today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the truth of your word. And I pray, Father, this morning that you would help us to have our faith reaffirmed. Lord, that no matter what happens in all the things that are so up in the air right now in our land, no matter what happens, Father, help us to have our feet firmly planted on you. Lord, I pray you would search every heart, mind, and soul beginning with mine. Lord, show us where we are not standing on that solid ground. Help us, Lord, to make the changes necessary to get on that solid rock. In Jesus' name we pray and say together, amen and amen. We're going to have a closing song, a time of worship. If you want to come and pray about something, you get that opportunity to. But stand with me as we 